Now, the most recent illustration of investors' relentless thirst for AI-driven ventures a record rally in drug discovery firm Recursion Pharmaceuticals following a $50 million investment from NVIDIA. The private investment firm for the private investment, I should say, from the AI link chip maker sparked a surge in recursion, which uses machine learning to discover new medicines. Now, the rally suggests that the AI craze might be infiltrating the biotech sector, which has been dealing with higher interest rates as well as a uh, thirst for new discoveries. Let's bring in Chris Gibson, the co-founder and CEO of Recursion. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I want to just start with, you know, for those of us who didn't uh, go beyond grade 11 science, how exactly are you using AI to enable drug discoveries? Well, thanks, Amber. Great to be here. So the way drug discovery is done today is incredibly inefficient. It takes 10 to 15 years and over $2 billion of investment. And it's really artisanal and bespoke. Scientists with decades of experience sit at the bench and they do experiments in a pretty manual way. And what Recursion has done is tried to move this industry in the direction of something more like an assembly line, where we have robots in our facility behind me doing millions of experiments a week in an automated way. We're collecting huge quantities of data, more than the Twitter fire hose in terms of the amount of data we're collecting every day. And we're using machine learning and AI to identify patterns in those data that are actually too hard for people to be able to pull out. And then we can act on those and drive medicines to patients that we hope will get there faster, will be better medicines, and one day will bring down the price of medicines, which as you know, is a big issue here in, in the US. It is. You're based in the U.S. Kudos, by the way, for getting that ticker, RXRX. That's a good win uh, for you guys. Uh, based in the U.S., but you acquired two Canadian companies um, and that are centered around this particular uh, problem that you're trying to solve. And you're setting up shop here at a time where, you know, there are others that are retreating from the tech landscape here. Yeah, we're really excited about what's happening in Canada generally, but really in Toronto and Montreal specifically. And so we acquired a company uh, in Toronto called Cyclica. It's about six to eight weeks ago. Um, that team has been building for the last decade for digital chemistry, which is a really important component of this assembly line that we're building. We also bought a company called Valence Discovery in Montreal. Uh, and you know that team is really on the forefront of generative AI, an incredible team there working with Mila. And so we've integrated uh, these teams into recursion. Uh, we're excited to continue building with them and integrating the tools that they've built uh, into, into what we're building at recursion, but also to grow our teams in, in Toronto and, and Montreal as well. Now, I have to ask you this question. With the uh, NVIDIA investment, your stock obviously surged, giving you a market cap north of $3 billion at a time where your revenue for 2023 is slated to come in at around $60 million. Even you must admit that is a lofty multiple, but it is certainly, um, you know, you're looking obviously to grow into that. I mean, what are you talking about in terms of the potential for recursion? Because $60 million in revenue, I mean, that should be a small cap. Um, and here you are trading at $3 billion. Well, I think this is what makes biotech so different, is that biotechs have traditionally no revenue until all of a sudden they get a phase two, phase three win, and they're looking at multi-billion dollar revenue on, on one drug and, and typically a sale of the company. Recursion is built to be different. We're a company that already has $60 million of revenue, even though we have no approved drug, because we have these partnerships with Roche Genentech, with Bayer. Uh, and so I think we're really changing the landscape. And this has been one of the challenges for us in terms of analyst coverage, et cetera, is that we are in many ways a biotech company. We've got five programs in human clinical trials today, but we're also a tech company. 40% of our team are software engineers, data scientists. We're training foundation models in AI. Think of these as like large language models, but for biology and chemistry with our partners at NVIDIA. And so we're bringing together two worlds. And it's a little bit like the early days of cloud or SaaS, where people didn't know how to think about things like multiples. And so, you know, I think our valuation is based less on today's revenue and more people thinking about what would happen if you changed the success rate of drug discovery from 10% of drugs going into clinical trials making it to 20% of drugs going into clinical trials making it, or 30% or 40%. There's hundreds of thousands of scientists dedicating their lives to bring new medicines to patients. But ultimately, 90% of those drugs fit in clinical trials. And yet this is a multi-trillion dollar industry. 
how do you think about leveraging new technology tools to increase the probability of success, which we hope to demonstrate in the coming years. And if one can do that, I think you can fundamentally change this industry. And there are 20 biopharma companies with market caps above $100 billion today. So there's plenty of room for us to grow here. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure out how you set up to capture that. Are you a platform company in which you're trying to do this for uh, drugs across all categories of illness? Are you focused? And then are you looking to license out you know, the technology that you have to really any pharma that wants to do it? Or do you want to be the biotech company that is actually discovering and then markets and deals with these drugs and in a kind of singular fashion? You know, we've set ourselves up to take advantage of all three of those value drivers in the near term. I think ultimately the untapped potential here is for us to become a vertically integrated biopharma company of the 21st century. And so we have our own pipeline of drugs, but because it's so expensive to take drugs through clinical trials, we've focused our internal pipeline in rare genetic diseases and precision oncology, where it may cost us 10, $20 million to run a clinical trial. And then we've partnered with the best in the world in larger intractable areas of biology where the trials could cost hundreds of millions of dollars. And I think the best example is our partnership with Roche Genentech. It's a decades long collaboration to map the whole of neuroscience and one oncology indication. This is a place where there's really been very few successes against the big diseases, except very recently, as we've seen in, 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 in Alzheimer's, some, some early successes. But we're fundamentally looking for new targets with our partners there against some of the biggest diseases in neuroscience. And we will have their support to run those clinical trials and our team will be able to learn. And at the end of the day with our NVIDIA collaboration, we'll also be putting some of our um, neural networks, some of our models for drug discovery onto the NVIDIA marketplace so that other pharma companies who aren't yet ready to do the kind of collaboration we've done with, with Roche Genentech can take advantage of some of these tools and drive value to recursion. But if I were to look out 10 years, Amber, I think recursion will be you know, the next Genentech, the next Novartis. That's what we're confident we'll be able to achieve over that, over that period of time using new technology. You did get this funding for uh, NVIDIA. Is that just because they're, uh, and are you able to leverage some of their technology as part of that? And as you were going through the fundraising environment, I'm certain uh, a lot of other non-AI tech companies that had a different experience, but just how would you characterize the fundraising environment for what you were doing? I mean, were you batting them away with a stick? Look, I think, you know, as recursion grew over the last 10 years, we've gone through all different kinds of environments. Some where we've been batting people away with sticks and others where we've really had to just continue to show people uh, what we've been building. And ultimately we've never been able, uh, uh, we've never run up against the challenge where we couldn't raise the money to drive this company forward. And I think that's because we've earned people's respect as a leader in this space. We've, we've credentialized with clinical programs, partnerships with biopharma leaders, with tech leaders, uh, and really an incredible team. And so I think you know, we'll continue to be able to raise money if and when we need it. But what I think is most important here about this NVIDIA partnership is that they have invested in recursion to align the incentives because they see recursion, I think, as, as a leader of this new space of tech bio. And I think they see the biopharma industry as a greenfield opportunity where most of these large biopharma companies today are not really using the level of technology that a company like recursion is or at the scale of a company like Recursion. And so they see us as a harbinger of what's to come. And I think they wanna to learn together with us so that mm. they can serve the rest of the industry better in the years forward. And I love equity investments because they really do align uh, incentives.